Hi, everyone. Uh, we're going to do the presentation in stages. Uh, so I'm going to start, um, and this is the outline of our presentation, which is about the um, uh, new child resource family for semantic change. Right, so what is semantic change research? Why does it matter? Semantic change, as we all know, is the phenomenon by which words, phrases, expressions change their meaning over time. And it is a task that has attracted attention, um, of course, well beyond historical linguistics. Um, recently, natural language processing uh, research has made uh, progress on this, um, on this task. And uh, yes, as examples, we can think of the English word head, uh, metaphorically, uh, shifting from upper part of the human body to someone in a leading position. And of course, we can observe this widely in historical languages. Take Latin, take uh, your historical language of preference. Um, and last, lexical semantic uh, change research is relevant well beyond linguistics uh, in a right range of humanities. Um, uh, research areas, uh, history of ideas, but also lexicography, legal studies, his, his, history in general. And uh, what do we need to do semantic change research? Um, well, a range of linguistic resources, um, daily diachronic corporate annotated with sensors for validation, lexica and dictionaries, language models for automating the process, and semantic change detection algorithms. Uh, so we do have a lot of uh, resources already that help uh, in this task. Of course, we have uh, computational lexical resources like WordNet, FableNet. We have a um, portion of corpora annotated with word senses, um, mostly synchronic. Uh, and as I said earlier, we have uh, quite uh, um, in a uh, quite a, an active area of research in natural language processing, dealing with computational methods for automatically detecting semantic change. In 2020, um, uh, together with some colleagues, I organized a semi-val task where um, uh, we asked people to um, sort of set the state of the art in terms of uh, identifying semantic change from Latin, English, Swedish, and German corpora. And then this has been expanded to cover other languages, including Italian, Russian, and Spanish. Uh, and the, in parallel has also been recent uh, development in, um, in uh, analyzing lexical semantic change and developing data models, linked data models for representing um, this data. So lots of activity. Um, and we have uh, uh, clearing source families that um, cover some of these um, resources. Um, we have historical corpora, manually annotated corpora, <coughs> language models, lexica, dictionaries, conceptual resources, word lists, uh, and much more. So we have a very rich landscape. Um, but what we realized is that these uh, were disconnected. So, so we came up with an idea. <coughs> Okay, so um, we soon realized that, uh, so basically, uh, to give a bit, a bit of background, so uh, Barbara won a grant for, uh, to work on um, a, a, a clan resource family uh, uh, that would cover um, um, diachronic lexical semantic change or resources for lexical semantic change. Um, however, uh, what we realized is that probably this wouldn't be a, a, a traditional clan resource family. Um, so that we soon realized that what we would need to do is to gather resources that were scattered across different uh, clan resource families and to possibly include new ones. Uh, and initially we thought it would be a, a cross a transversal resource. Um, but then we kind of, uh, um, kind of honed in on the idea of uh, actually creating workflows. And uh, in, in this case, we were inspired by uh, the workflows that, are, uh, that have been made available on the Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud, SHOCK Marketplace. 
Um, so these uh, were very much kind of uh, what we were looking for because they were task oriented. They uh, guided users to resources which were already available in the shock uh, portal, shock marketplace portal, and uh, they broke down the, the, the process of um, carrying out uh, different tasks which were related to uh, uh, measuring and uh, uh, extracting information, lexical semantic change. Uh, they broke down the, the, these kind of um, tasks into single steps and they allowed you to then connect uh, each of these single steps to uh, relevant resources whether uh, uh, and these could be either data sets or digital tools or uh, manuals or other kinds of materials so here you have uh, an example of uh, a workplace in the uh, shock uh, marketplace and this uh, is a workplace a workplace a workflow for creating a dictionary in TI so you can see it's broken down into uh, here we have five different steps and if you click on the third step you can see that it uh, has a, an explanation and then it has uh, links to related items which are within the um, which are also hosted within or they're listed within the the shock marketplace, such as, for instance, the Viennese uh, lexicographic editor. Um, so, uh, in, in terms of what what kinds of resources, uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, potentially client resource families that we were interested for were interested in, uh, uh, in, uh, in while kind of compiling these workflows, uh, so that the main kinds of resources that we we, we identified, which we wanted to actually. Um, um, feature in these in these workflows included uh, lexical semantic annotation data sets such as the uh, semi-val uh, data set which Barbara mentioned uh, as well as training uh, trained word embeddings from diachronic corpora and these could be either word type or word token embeddings and we also wanted to, to uh, uh, refer to or link to tools for semantic change detection, uh, uh, for automated semantic change detection, as well as computational lexical resources, which provide the sense, uh, sense inventories for annotating and corporate in the first step. Uh, and then moving on to the fifth step, uh, we were also interested in, in how this uh, information could then be made available in terms of uh, uh, publishing as structured data sets including uh, uh, in, in, as, as, as graphs uh, uh, using standard vocabularies, uh, as well as uh, other resources such as bibliographic references and uh, other useful digitized resources. So now I'll hand over to uh, uh, Paula, who will present uh, a use case. Okay, so we basically drafted an example of a um, use case of these workflows, especially for in the specific for lexicology, and we applied this use case on the medical Latin lexicon. So for context, um, Latin medical terms are an example of uh, a field where we can find lexical semantic change. Uh, these terms were often borrowed from everyday language and then adapted in the medical anatomic le lexicon with a specialized meaning. That was acquired through some type of semantic change, such as metaphor. And these are just uh, some examples. So we have lenticula, which uh, initially means lentil, and then uh, shifts towards the meaning of freckle, or uh, mola from millstone to molar, molar tooth, and then spina from thorn to spine, but there are so many others. And uh, the workflow for lexicology starts with this. Uh, so the researcher ideally determines this semantic field, the field of medicine and anatomy in Latin, and then produces a list of works that are associated to this field and that supposedly have undergone semantic change. And the expected outcome at the end of this workflow is to determine which words have changed their meaning and which senses they have acquired or lost or which of their meanings have undergone some type of semantic change. Mm. So step one is first to set up a corpus. Uh, it needs to be a reference corpus for the target language. So in this case, Latin doesn't have necessarily have to be sense annotated, but we need some type of uh, linguistic information and, uh, for instance, 
so basic uh, lemmatization, post-tagging, and uh, metadata about the texts, the type of texts uh, in the corpus. And then we split the corpus into different subcorpora, so specialized medical texts versus non-specialized medical texts, uh, non-specialized texts. And for this first step, we can refer to resource families that are inclined, like uh, historical corpora and manually annotated corpora. So in a specific for this use case on medical Latin, we can use the Latinized corpus um, by Barber, <laughs> and uh, which is already in the Clarin infrastructure. So this one's covered in the in Clarin. And uh, in step two, we need to determine the word census uh, for the words that we are targeting for the analysis. For this uh, for this step, we can use there is. A, well, there are various uh, clarion resource families. There are dictionaries, lexica, and also conceptual resources. Uh, for Latin, there is Latin WordNet, which is not in the clarion infrastructure uh, yet, but uh, can be integrated in the open marketplace. Um, this is an example of how the word census would be displayed in Latin WordNet. It's uh, openly accessible through an API online. And uh, these are the, the wet census for Spina. So we can see that uh, one of the wet census is a, a small spike or sharp pointed tip on a stem of a leaf. And then we have the, the meaning that has come afterwards, supposedly. So the series of vertebrae forming the axis of the skeleton. Uh, so basically a backbone. Uh, so on step three, we have uh, train word embeddings on subcorpora. So we have these two subcorpora, non-specialized texts and specialized medical texts. We train the word embeddings model on the two subcorpora and we align the two models to allow comparison between the vocabulary, the two models. And then we determine the list of nearest neighbors for the target words in the two subcorpora. Um, comparing the nearest neighbors of the target words in the two subcorpora, we can determine how the word has changed based on words that occur in similar contexts. And that word embeddings can be evaluated against the gold standard that can be created through by using conceptual resources that we've seen in step two. And uh, for word embeddings, for Latin especially, we have the resource uh, in Clarin by Sprunioli Passaretti Moretti. So just an example from the actual data, uh, we took the example of Spina. So as you see, it changed from thorn to backbone. So this is the outcome for the nearest neighbors in the uh, non-medical corpus, so non-specialized texts and in the medical texts. We can see among the nearest neighbors in the non-specialized corpus, we have words that point towards the meaning of thorn, like vepres or uh, virgultum, which basically mean thorn bush, or stramentum, like cornstalk, so something pointy. And then in the medical subcorpus, we have vertebra, sinua, uh, which means to bend in the shape of an arc, or uh, costa, so the ribs. And, uh, and starting from these data we can so the researcher can determine the type of semantic change that is uh, shown in place in that is in place so there is no specific resource family for bibliographic references in climb but um, in the open marketplace uh, the manuals or bibliographic references can be linked to a step of the workflow uh, as long as they've been stored in the infrastructure before. And uh, for instance, for the word spina, we can see that, so based on references, uh, that it's become specialized in the medical domain through metaphorical shift that is based on the resemblance between the two reference. So we have some ideas for future developments of this proposal. Um, we're, so we're considering implementing the work done so far within the Clarion infrastructure and specifically following the open marketplace model since it's already there. So we have these workflows with um, 
We've developed workflows for uh, different research areas, lexicology, legal study, studies, history, lexicography, and historical and historical dictionaries, NLP, and they all uh, follow the model that is already available in um, open marketplace. So there is a workflow step, uh, to, uh, there are steps for each workflow, and then the related items in the clearing resource families. Um, and a description for each step. Um, these workflows can be adapted to research on semantic change in diachrony or semantic shift across different genres or domains, as we've seen with the medical Latin. They're all available in, on Zenodo as part of the report of the project. And uh, the problem is that they're supposed to be uh, general enough, so we would like them to be not, this is the workflow for medical Latin, but this is the workflow for a lexicologist who's working on whatever language in whatever um, domain. And uh, we cannot link Clarence's families uh, to work um, to open marketplace directly, but we need to link specific resources. So, so this is the main problem for now. And uh, the other uh, objective is to bring together existing and new resources for lexical semantic change research within the workflows. So also adding new annotated corpora with lexical semantic annotations, trained word embeddings, computational lexical resources, and so on. So this is part of this uh, work of Clarin, uh, funded by Clarin. So thank you, Clarin. <laughs> and uh, thank you. You mentioned that it's impossible to link uh, resource families directly to the uh, open marketplace. Uh, did you consider using a virtual collection uh, to represent the, uh, the uh, resource family? Because as soon as you have a language resource family as a virtual collection, it's a digital object sort of for the marketplace and you could easily include it. Um, so yes, we did consider this, um, however, uh, the problem is so it, we would have to actually add it to the shock marketplace as well, because you can only link to resources within the shock marketplace to other resources within the shock marketplace. And the other problem is, so if we created a virtual collection, we probably have to update it, right? Every time there was a new uh, resource added to the resource family. And that kind of seems like it's, it, there should be an easier way of doing it, no? But we, we have definitely considered this but if there was already if it was a doi if i had a doi and the resource family as a doi was already uploaded to the shock marketplace that would be like the simplest thing possible for us but there are probably there are workarounds and we are also kind of discussing this amongst ourselves and with clary <laughs> thank you i have more of a, a question on on lexical semantic change like uh, you mentioned that okay i, I was very curious about um, one thing is that, um, can you see trends uh, in semantic change or do you have hypotheses on, um, on trends and semantic change? Like for example, you've, you've talked about metaphor, but you, we also have uh, specific meanings or more general meanings or, I mean, okay. So if you have hypotheses on those trends, um, how w will you be able to sort of uh, verify those hypotheses uh, based on the work that you have done? Did you sort of come back to that? Yeah, thank you. Definitely, lots of there are lots of hypotheses that, that people have been put forward, and I mean, we here we focused on creating a resource or or workflow um, to enable this kind of research. So we didn't have as my main objective to actually get to uh, more new scientific results or testing existing hypotheses, but we want to enable this kind of research and. Uh, by automating the process of identifying like, semantic change, ideally also creating sense annotated corpora, we will be in a much better position to gather empirical data to test those hypotheses. Yeah. 